The silver we're looking at is silver with a story. This is the earliest hoard of hack silver from anywhere beyond the edge of the Roman Empire. It changes the way we understand Roman frontier politics. Parts of four vessels, originally beautiful luxury tableware, chopped into pieces and sent north as a weight of silver to buy peace on the frontier. Found at Dercy in Fife, and this is a find that had turned up in a metal detecting rally. And the first finds had been made by a schoolboy, David Hall, who was only 14 at the time. He then talked to the other detectorists, they worked around the site and recovered almost 200 fragments of silver. But that was just the beginning of it. Because we then went out to excavate, and the excavation told us lots of things. One of the things it told us was there was a lot more silver there. So in total, we had over 400 fragments of silver. This hoard was hacked twice, first in antiquity by the Romans and then by the plough. So after it was buried in Fife, the plough has smashed this silver into tiny, tiny fragments. And we have had this devil's job to stick all these fragments back together again. So when you get this silver out from the field, of course it's covered in soil, it's covered in mud. And one of the processes that the conservators had to do was gradually, carefully, painstakingly teasing this mud off. So in total, we had over 400 fragments of silver. When we started out, we had no idea how all these things would fit together or what they were intended to look like. But as you look at the objects and clean the surfaces, get the mud off, you start to pick up clues. You see bits of rim or tool marks, things that begin to match together. And working with the conservators, working with an illustrator, working with scientists and with archaeologists, you begin to get a picture of how these vessels would have looked. These 408 fragments are parts of only four vessels. And they're all rather different. So one of them was originally a beautiful dish, about 40 centimetres in diameter, with a lovely beaded rim, decorated medallion in the centre. And this would have been used for serving food at the table. Another one was a fluted bowl used for washing your hands at the table, because in a Roman feast, you'd normally be eating with your hands. The third one was a bowl with the decoration punched in from the outside. A wreath of olives and then vases with grapes piled high in them and vines growing out of them. An absolutely incredible vessel. And the fourth was a real puzzle because it looks like a flawed casting. You'd normally cast these things to shape and then hammer them to the final form. But rather than chucking it in the melting pot to reuse, they've thrown it in the scales. Because the weight is what mattered. These vessels had gone from being used for fine dining within the Roman world to being used as a payment beyond the Roman world, to deal with friends or buy off enemies. And it seems that the people in Fife were acting as a buffer between Hadrian's Wall to the south and the troublesome groups emerging to the north. So we found the pit where the hoard was buried and to one side of it was a small peat bog. People often put prestige goods or valued objects into these wet areas as offerings. And to the other side of it, the stumps of two standing stones. Now these standing stones were already ancient, 2,000 years old by the time the hoard was buried. So we suspect this silver that came north as a gift or a payoff then enters the ground as a gift to the gods to win their favour. We were expecting this hoard to date right to the end of the Roman period, the same period as the famous Traprain treasure. The more we looked for parallels, we realised it was earlier. A hundred years earlier, buried around about AD 300. This makes it the earliest hack silver hoard found beyond the edge of the Roman Empire. It changes the way we understand hack silver and frontier politics on a European scale. This new hoard from Dercy is on display for the first time in the Scotland's Early Silver Exhibition. It's a key step to understanding the use of silver over its first thousand years in Scotland.